Let's talk tiny. Specifically, I want to look at how the tiny house can foster a strong environmental ethic that leads to real change. Not only is the tiny house a viable housing option for some, but it also challenges many to reconsider how they value physical goods, personal relationships, and the environment, all while providing a greater amount of economic freedom. Now, before we go any further, there are some drawbacks to the tiny house, which you can find in greater detail in a long form paper I've written about the movement linked below. But this essay tries to focus on how the tiny house and the tenants behind the movement challenge rampant consumption norms of American culture. In doing so, living tiny could lead us on a path towards mitigating our negative impact on the natural world. More often than not, the keeping up with the Joneses mentality pervades the minds of Americans, and living in a large space merely encourages homeowners to buy material goods that they probably don't need. The key to the tiny house is that it constricts consumption and waste, which encourages its owners to lead a minimalist lifestyle. Listening to tiny house owners speak on their consumption habits, it's clear that minimal consumption becomes a necessity in order to live tiny. It changes so much. It's like you start out and you, you know, you buy things and then you think about the idea of building a tiny house and then you have to start limiting things for a more practical reason than anything else, you know, thinking, well, do I really, can I fit this in the house? I love that it's small because then it keeps me in check with everything. You know, it's like, I just can't, I used to have no reason to not buy things, but it was like, I never had a real reason not to buy the clothes. And now that I live here, I have reasons to not do things. And it's funny, I'll go around and walk into a store, I'll shop for like six months before I buy anything. Because it's like nothing has anything that I really want or need. Essentially, the tiny house provides a much needed reason to stop the unconscious collection of material goods. By physically minimizing their spaces, tiny house owners re-engage with how much they really need. And less consumption means a smaller environmental footprint because manufacturing, shipping, and displaying products requires a large amount of resources. Instead of focusing on the physical, tiny homeowners tend to adopt a lifestyle built around common experiences and a recognition of what is important to them. With this outlook, those who move into a tiny house are not necessarily downsizing, but right-sizing their lives by cutting down on their burdens. Another more abstract effect the tiny house brings to their owners is its ability to nudge people towards the outdoors. In The Big Tiny, Dee Williams writes about this intimacy with nature found in her everyday interaction with her skylight. The fact is, even after all these years of sleeping with my head inches from the roof, nature still surprises me. And then I'm surprised by my surprise, thinking that at this stage in the game, I should be a bit bored by things like frost. While a tiny house owner I interviewed claimed, I could easily sit in this house all day because I adore it. I love being here. I sit here and I do everything. I could sit here for four days and be completely happy. But <laughs> when your windows are so close and your door is so close and you have so much time that it's like, well, what could I do? So once again, by reimagining what four walls can look like and understanding that smaller square footage may actually be better, the tiny house movement can help owners connect with their natural surroundings. The home, then, is no longer a place for all your wants and needs. It instead brings you outdoors into your community and environment, helping to show you that the world outside is just as precious as the world inside. But I think what's important to consider is that the tiny house lifestyle can exist separate from the tiny house and can influence the greater American public, even if the majority of homeowners don't live in tiny houses. Instead of seeing the tiny house as the expected standard of living, we should view going tiny as an extreme example of successful right-sizing. The tiny house's countercultural approach creates an opportunity outside the norms of society where people can understand that the value of the environment and human interaction is much greater than the value of material goods. Whether a thousand square feet or 50 square feet is right for you, we should draw upon the ideas honed by the tiny house movement to better understand how to live thoughtfully in our rapidly changing natural world.